How's it going everyone? Hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to my first impressions of the Object 780. Before we get into this though, I do want to thank Alpen as he did gift me the gold that I needed to convert to free XP. Um, and then I used some of my blueprints and also I think I spent like 14 million or something on it. Um, so, I mean, it's only credits, Like at the end of the day I can make all those back. So I'm not really too fast. Let's now go ahead and get into this video. So the Object 780, it is a new vehicle that has been added and the way that you can get it is by completing the assembly um, for the tank. The way that this works is that there are lots of different ways that you can actually um, basically craft this tank. Um, you can use gold credits, bonds and free XP and you can also use the universal and national fragments. So I had quite a few of the blueprints laying around. I used all of my uh, blueprints that I could. Um, you could only use 50 from each nation and I believe I had like over 200 nearly of each nation so that wasn't really an issue and I also as I said used credits so I had about 16 million I used 14 million to get that so yeah it was quite expensive and it cost 20,000 gold to convert 500k XP which Alpen gifted me which is a lot of money and I would not be making this video without Alpen, so thank you again. Either way, we have it now, and we have got my 277 crew in there. Um, it is a bit of a weird crew, because you only get three crew members. And yes, each one of them can come from the 277, or even the uh, the IS-7 and the 260, you know, like... These, these are the kind of standard crews, and then in the IS-7, you do get a, another loader, so you can kind of interchange them if you wanted to train your crew in this tank, but this is a very expensive crew trainer. So what I'd suggest you do, if you do get one of these things, and we'll talk about whether or not it's actually worth it of getting this thing uh, at the end, but if you do get one, then just know it is free crew members and just stick your best crew in there. I'm using Ventrum of V-Stab as I do believe that it, that is the best. Uh, you could put HP boost on this, you could put a turbo on this. There are lots of different things that you can do. The dispersion of the tank is not that bad that you could get away without a V-Stab. But I feel like, for my playstyle, I just want a V-Stab. Like, you could probably get rid of it and you'll be fine. Definitely don't get rid of the gun rammer because you need every bit of DPM that you can get. You are a brawling-ish uh, heavy tank. And you have 2.8k even with all of this. Right now I'm not using food, but if you were, then you go up to 29 and I would advise that everyone uses food. I'm only using Fire Extinguisher because I want more credits at the moment. Um, and I'm just trying to see how many credits I can make. But that's a completely separate separate thing. For ammo loadout wise, I'm going for 2010 free. Realistically speaking, again, you should just go full gold. If you don't care about credits. Because they are just better. I will go for 10 gold rounds and then 20 AP. Um, just to kind of show you everything about the tank. And yeah, I think that's quite enough talking about the tank. Let's go play a game or two. Ah, before we do, I did play two games on stream after I was uh, gifted the gold and got it. And we averaged 4,000 average damage between the two games. One of the games was about 2.6 and then the other one was nearly 5k. Anyway, let's go play. Right, well, I am the only 780 on this game, which is very, very unusual because I've been seeing there has been like six 780s per team uh, sometimes especially while I was just I was just doing a quick test stream um, and yeah there's, there was a lot of 780s um, I don't normally stream on Thursdays but I was I only done like a quick hour uh, stream just to test a few uh, audio levels and stuff like that um, I don't have intuition I don't have intuition because I don't have a loader that's annoying. I have a commander, gunner, and driver. Ah. I'm going to have to train intuition, aren't I? On something. See, at least we're learning different things as we play the tank. We are learning. Uh, let's just sit here and just wait. See if someone wants to peek. Trees falling. Are we going to get our first contestant? Oh, my 
Okay, well, you are not really what I wanted to see here, but sure. See if we can hit that. Not really. That's a very, very hard shot to hit, to be fair. But there's no arty, so we don't really need to worry about that. Uh, E100s. Like, E100s are very annoying to try and pen, he says, as he hits the top of the tank. Um, even with my premium rounds, they're going to struggle against an E100 because 311 is not really enough uh, to reliably go through uh, an E100's turret face. Uh, especially APCR, because you're going to lose some pen over distance. So, it's, unlike heat rounds, where heat rounds make it a little bit, you know, easier to pen E100s. Well, actually, a lot easier, to be fair. Um, you're going to be struggling a little bit. Go on, VZ. I mean, this is fine at the moment. And even though that these are pushing, I'm not really too worried about that. I mean, it, it looks like we're going to lose this game either way, but at least we can try. That's going to be a very hard shot for me to hit, unless I can try and hit his engine deck if he goes up like that. Maybe next time he, he bounces like that, I'll try and shoot it. This VZ doesn't seem like he wants to push either. Now, the Capolas are only on the middle and the right-hand side, so you need to watch out for that. It's unlucky. Comes the VZ and also the Kunza Panzer. Ignore the Kunza Panzer though. Maybe I'll shoot you. Yeah. Only a tracking shot. VZ's on reload. I'll repair that. Oh well. There's nothing you can really do. Like the team is already dead. Um, yeah, the game was already over way before we could do anything. Um, yeah, there's no, like, this tank is not going to do any different to any other tank in that situation. You're going to die, no matter what you're in. Well, that wasn't really the best of games to show off the tank, was it? Uh, yeah, no matter what tank you're in, you're going to die there. Uh, like, you come third with damage on 1.5k. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe we would have got one more in if we had actually aimed the shot on the uh, 59 pattern, but just go into the next game. Okay, well, we're on Paris now, so this should be interesting. What can we do here? And this is more like the matchmaking, like with all of these 780s. Um, I mean, it does actually get a pretty cool style if you got uh, the tank early enough, uh, where you could get the number on the back and also on the turret, sorry, not the turret, the, uh, the gun, the actual barrel, which is pretty cool. And I think they should do more of them, to be fair. Because it's a nice, it, the thing is with this tank, I quite like the, the whole crafting aspect of it and the idea of that. If they made it so, like, eventually you could do it for other tanks. So, here's what I was what I was thinking. Like how in Clown Wars, you can... I don't know where that one went. Like how in Clown Wars, you can make Tier 8 premiums. And you made the permit by playing games and then earning resources. I think eventually Wargaming could actually do it so that you earn resources, an extra resource in battle, and then actually craft some, you know, novel tanks, which would be pretty cool. I believe that World of Warships has a similar kind of system. 
But I think that'd be pretty nice. You know, make, make these like unique tanks. And I, I'm telling you right now, I don't think this tank's OP. Like, this is a unique tank and how reward tanks should be. But it's definitely not a chief replacement or 279E replacement or anything like that. Um, it's definitely not. Also, side scraping in this thing is a pain. Like, a big pain. Because you see how it curves inwards on each side? Um, that's an easy pen. It's like 250mm thick there. So, it can be a bit annoying. I want to make sure I'm not over peaking like the chief in this 780 here. Also, it's going to start getting farmed by the other people that side as well. I might actually try and move back here. Oh, friend, please. I'm going to have to go out wide. Ugh, very annoying. I mean, maybe this guy will try and overpeak me. I'm tracked here now. Don't know how that didn't pen. Oh, another game. Like, we're dead either way again. Because the middle is going to start shooting us, and then the only way out is to reverse. It'd be nice to actually just get a normal game, wouldn't it? I don't know why I bother keep going down into the dip. It's completely useless. Never go into the dip here. Because every single time that I've ever gone into the dip, I've just died. With no damage. See, like, look. This 780 is about to die. I don't know what one he even is. Uh, this one. Like... I'm dead either way. If I stay there, I'm dead. So, it makes no difference. <sighs> Can I please just have a normal game though? Like, please? Oh, that was fun. Yep. Very, very enjoyable experience for everyone. So, yeah, the problem is with this tank when you side scrape, these curves here, as soon as you try and side scrape like this, this is an easy pen. And even though that you can't track and do damage at the same time, unless you are, you know, below it like this and you fire up, um, then you could. But it's it's annoying. It's very annoying, actually. Um, the fact that this just exists. And I mean, the thing is, if that didn't exist, it would just be so stupid. And like, it would just be another tank where you just sit there, size scrape and, you know, it's that's it. The game's over. Like, because you, you just can't pen it. Um, but it is annoying that it's like this. And you have to try and work your way around it. Um, because you have basically no lower plate. I mean, you do. But yeah, at the same time, you kind of don't. Um, it is okay to try and go out like like this. And then bait some shots on people that are going to shoot like, like here. So if you imagine there's a wall basically where this track is, where the track ends, um, like this, and then you bait people to shoot this, and then they end up bouncing, it's going to be quite nice. Um, and then you can just go around and kill them. So you have to kind of work out how to play this tank and not just hemorrhage hit points as soon as you try and side scrape. Anyway, we'll play another game, probably another two games because... like. These games have been so fast, it's just ridiculous. Okay, so we're against tier 8, which is quite nice. Um, I've also turned my AC on, so if you can hear that a little bit, it shouldn't be too loud, but if you can hear it, then apologies. It's way too hot in the UK. It is actually way too hot. Uh, right now, it is 28 degrees outside. Yep, and I have my doors closed, my windows closed, because I'm trying to record something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hot. So, hopefully it's not too loud. It shouldn't be too loud, but just in case uh, you can hear it. Apologies. Anyway, we're going to go to the left here. 
And we can put one into this. And we it does get minus seven degrees of gun depression, right? Which is okay, but it's not great. Um can't see the E4 right at the very back of the map. See if we can kind of... Uh... It's unlucky. See if we can get an angle where we're not going to get shot by the E4. I mean... There's a shot there. It's not going to be an easy shot, though. I will say, because this tank's quite long, it can be quite annoying uh, when you're going over ridge lines. But also, because it's so low profile, you can actually kind of play on these kind of dips and you can play areas that you didn't really think even existed. Like, I'm so low profile here that even this little mound is covering me. And I, I it only has to cover the lower plate because the upper hole is so well angled. So it doesn't have to cover much. As long as you can cover just a little bit, you're good. I mean, a lot of people were saying how the turret on this thing is going to be broken and so OP and that it's like a hold down monster. No. The thing is, it gets one one bigger capola in the middle and then another uh, capola to the left. And yeah, sure, if it's using all its gun depression, which is rare, then yes, it can be annoying to deal with. However, if you have 340 heat, you can go around the gun. You see where these two little machine gun ports are? Or viewports, I guess? Um, you can pen them. I think it's only about 300 or something millimeters thick, so you can go straight through them. Or even less than that, maybe. Maybe it's like two something. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's not uh, it's not impossible to pen it. Let's put one into this gun. Uh, damage wise, I'd probably be okay with around about uh three and a half K damage. Oh. Hello. Oh dear. Maybe I can bounce this. High roll? Okay, the E4 just shot. We will go around and just kill this guy quickly. <laughs> okay. Should have gone for a lower plate. That was a bad shot. Let's now move up a bit and see if we can get any more shots on people. Nice shot onto him. Take one from you, I know. I'm now ammo racked as well, which is a problem. Oh, I thought there was someone to my left. There's not. I thought there was one person behind me. 780, it was either the 780 or the E75. I thought they were, uh, they were covering my flank here. But he also missed the uh, E4. Yeah, I mean, it's my bad for, for dying here. Like, I should have killed the E4. Oh well. I mean, it's not a bad, uh, bad game. Like, it shows you that the tank can easily just go hold down, even on, like, the slightest things. 
and it makes it quite hard to pen. But even when it's hold down here, like the anyone that's over in here where the scorpion is, they can still pen me because my cupola exists. And you saw when I was playing against the uh, 780, the cupola is quite big and it's quite easy to hit. Even with just standard rounds, you can go through it. So it's quite nice to uh, play against. And I don't think it's broken or OP or anything like that. Well, I mean, even though that we lost, we still done 3.7k, so wasn't too bad overall, to be fair. Um, yeah. Into the next game and our last game, uh, and then we'll finish off and I'll give you my uh, final thoughts about whether or not you should get this tank. Although, to be fair, by the time that this is already out, it's probably already sold out. So, I mean, for everyone that missed out or everyone that got one, I'll tell you my thoughts of whether or not I think it's worth it. Well, that's a lot of heavy tanks on the enemy team and on my team. Yeah. Yeah. Right. How many is it? Uh, one, two, three, four, so what, 11 heavy tanks. Wow. On each team. 22 heavy tanks in this game out of 30. Well, we're going to go to C1 and we'll see how this goes. I don't think it's going to go that well. I mean, there's no RT, so potential, I guess. Unfortunately, both of our shells went low. Right, can we catch someone kind of off guard here? Oh, that's the first fire we received. Apparently it does get set on fire a lot. This is not good, by the way. This is really not good, actually. I need to run away already. This is awful. Like, this is already lost. C1 is lost. You cannot fight that. So what we're going to do is fall back and hopefully we can then fight and help our team out from back here. That's the plan. <sighs> Not going to plan though. No real shot for us at the moment. There we go. That's a nice shot there. And hopefully we can make our little nest here as well. See how we just don't quite have enough gun depression? So annoying. We are just not enough. One seven eight is dead. Unfortunately, though, we are now dead here because our entire team is over the other side of the map. There's no one to help us either. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I don't know. That went high. There's just nothing I can do. Literally nothing I can do here. That's <laughs> it. I don't know. Like, I, what are you meant to do in this game? I mean, I I didn't go over this side because I thought that everyone would be over on C1, and they were. Like, the majority of the health was over at C1. But my team goes here, and yeah, sure, they've won this side. That's fine, but we've lost this, and now they're just going to be pushing through. Well, never mind. It looks like the enemy team are actually idiots. Because instead of just going through the base and forcing the cap and then forcing people to come back like even i'm not saying cap right i'm just saying you need to put one on the cap just to force them to come here because now all that's going to happen is that they can just farm everyone that's around here and as they push like this chief should be dead 
Don't auto aim at the chief. Jesus. Well, he's lucky that hit. But now that the chief's dead, you still have a Leo 1 that's pretty healthy, the T57, which can clip. I don't know why they didn't go to the cap. Like, I don't know how this guy is still alive either. But it's genuinely amazing how the enemy team just lost this. I mean, saying that though, our Type 5 hasn't really moved. Has he just gone AFK? I think he's just gone AFK. He's legit just given up. Okay, well, technically then it's just a Leo and our 780 remaining. I mean, maybe he crashed? <gasps> the Type 5 has awoken! Should have just gone down into the dip there. And then he would have been safe. Both of these are now one shot for each of them. As long as the 780 kills the crown, it should be fine. Ooh. Oh no, don't push forward. <laughs> well, rip. Where's he looking? <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, that was just depressing. Like, genuinely. That was some of my worst games that I've ever had at tier 10. Yeah, and it doesn't even matter, like, what tank you're in. You're just going to be getting farmed. Because no matter what you do... Like, I, I was on the flank with the majority of the enemy team. Like, every single time. And my team was just nowhere to be found. Even when we sent people up there... Like... I don't know. I mean, realistically, the Leo probably threw this the most out of all of them. Like, he shouldn't have tried to go round and circle strafe the uh, 780. Just literally just shot him once and then gone into the dip to hide from the crown. Anyway, what do I think about this tank? Well, considering that I played six games and got 2.4k DPG. And we haven't won a single game. Not one game. I don't really have a very good opinion on this tank. At the moment, like for the first impressions of this thing, is that it is just not OP and it's not worth the money. I could kind of see that it wasn't worth the money anyway in the first place because it's not worth 20,000 gold. I mean, it's worth 20,000 gold if someone wants to gift you it and then you make a video on it. But if it was my money, I wouldn't be spending that much. Like, it is not a great tank. It's really not. Yes, it gets 530 alpha, and yes, you can trade with people. But the thing is, it's so awkward to play. Like, these sides here mean that you cannot side scrape. And then you get the front of it, you can still get penned in a lower plate. And the, the upper hull armor, fine, it's super good. But yet you can still get penned in the cupola, in the left cupola, and then underneath the underneath and around the gun. Like, with ease. I'll show you what I mean. So here we have the 780, right? This Capola, pretty easy to hit. Um, let's say that you are playing with... I mean, let, let's take the Chieftain, for example, right? Because this doesn't have heat rounds. So it's kind of a little bit annoying to deal with. Um, even with APCR, you can still go through this. Like, it's about 300 millimeters thick either side and then underneath the gun um, you will not pen the actual gun mantle itself um, but you can still go through that if you use he you ain't penning it anywhere so not the capola not anywhere you need a lot more than that to go through the uh, capola but with standard rounds you can definitely pen the capola as you can see it's about 200 millimeters thick um or you know depending on uh, the angle, obviously, that you're shooting it at from. Um, also, another thing to mention is that you can go and shoot the uh, the actual upper hull if you get close enough. So if you are, you know, side scrape, or sorry, face hugging it, 
and then you are a little bit taller than it, then you can always go and shoot it there. It's quite a nice thing to uh, keep in mind. If we then take a look at something that has 340 heat, this tank becomes a lot less scary. <laughs> this is now an 86% chance, nearly 90 in, in some places, to go and pen it around the, uh, the actual turret. And the Capolas are a lot easier to hit because they don't care about the angle of impact and this becomes a lot wider. So if you have some heat rounds and you cannot see the Capolas, then go straight for the gun because the gun's always going to be facing you if it wants to shoot you. So you should always have a shot to be able to hit this. Um, and also, even then, if you are slightly above it, then you can go through the upper hole, but be warned, the higher up that you go, the less chance you have of penning it. So is this thing the next Chieftain or 279? No. I mean, maybe against tier 8, it is the next 279. Um, because it can be annoying against tier 8, especially if you cannot get around the side of it. Um, and if it's playing hold down, yes, it can be a problem against tier 8. But against anything that has tier 10 pen, or even tier 9 pen, like this tank is not that great. Um, it, in my opinion, it's not worth the money. It's not worth spending all your resources in World of Tanks on this tank. When you could go out and get a much better tank called the 277 or even the IS-7. The IS-7, in my opinion, is better than this thing. Even though that it's still, you know, kind of a relic of the past, I would still prefer to play that over this thing. Or maybe not prefer to play it, but I'd be more competitive. Because I do, I don't mind playing this thing. It's just that you're not going to do as well as you would if you were in a 277. Because you don't have the pen, you don't have the, the hull armor, as much as you may have great hull armor when you're completely facing onwards and you can hide your lower plate, as soon as you come out of that position, you have no armor whatsoever. Like, because you can just get pens straight away into the, uh, the little pike. Uh, I mean, it's kind of pike nose, but into the side here, as soon as they, you know, over peak this like so. And if they're running at you, it's an easy shot. Also, the lower plate. Pretty easy to pen if you do have tier 10 pen. And the Capola is pretty easy as well. Compare that to a 277, which is wherever it is. Like you have a very, very troll uh, hull armor. You have a much nicer turret. This Capola is a, just a pain to pen compared to the, the uh, 780. And you can actually side scrape. Not as well, not as well as like a mouse, but. You can side scrape in this thing, and you can also reverse side scrape really well in this tank. Like, if you have a 277, there's no reason to get a 780 unless you're collecting. Unless you collect vehicles, or you're like me and you make a YouTube video on it, I don't think it's worth it. So, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, you did enjoy it. I do want to just say thank you to Alpen again because it was a lot of money just to make this video. And uh, yeah, I'll be playing it some more. I'll probably be playing it on stream. And. I think maybe it will do a bit better when there isn't so many 780s in the matchmaker. Uh, but at the moment, the matchmaker is just a mess. It really is. And I don't think that anyone's kind of gameplay at the moment will attribute to the true nature of this tank at the moment. Oh, especially not on day one and probably not on day two. Because the matchmaker is going to be filled with 780s and it's not going to be how World of Tanks usually is. Let me know your thoughts on the tank down below. And I hope you have a very good rest of your day.